Um, we want to pray, amen. We want to pray for the surrounding churches, amen. Some are going to Rialto and Riverside. Um, want to pray for the church in Lima, amen, for the personal needs of the of the pastor. The church is in revival, but the pastor needs help, amen. So want to pray for the personal needs, amen, for the, amen. For the church out there and, and for the pastor and his family, and God will just help them, help them. amen. Uh, it, financially, it's hard out there, amen, especially if you're not from the country, amen. So want to pray for that. Um, want to pray for the Columbia Church, amen, the church we've been helping. He sent me a message yesterday. Uh, showed me a picture of, of uh, some dirt that's next to his building and and what it was is that's where they're building the new children's church and re new restaurants amen, amen. amen. Was thanking us for the for the investment we've made into his ministry amen, amen. so I want to continue praying for them amen and uh, and uh, you know what this 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 morning I want to pray amen for sister Erica's family amen for for her kids, for her husband, yes. I want to pray yes. for her mother, for yeah. just for everybody. Amen. Uh, we know she's with the Lord, yes. and, and we're thankful. Yes. Amen. But it doesn't mean we can't we can't mourn. Um, yes. But uh, but we want to pray for them. We want to pray that God will just continue to be with them. Yes. Amen. We want to pray that that uh, that God is not done, and that He's gonna He's gonna bring salvation. Amen. Yes. Through all this. Amen. And uh, and uh, you know we we prayed on on Friday night. We came and we prayed. And one of the things, and, and I'm going to ask you, and this is going to be what we're going to do for a while, and we're going to we're going to be focusing on this as a church because we need to do this as a church. Yes. We're going to we're going to begin to pray against death. Amen. Yes. Death has Amen. no sting, and Jesus has the victory. Yeah. Amen. You know, you know, and 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 I say that in in with full faith, knowing that those that have been close to us have made it to be with the Lord. I understand yes, that. Yes. But, but. God wants to use lives, and He's going to change things. He's going to change circumstances. So I want to, I want to prep. So, so listen to this: Jake, Lynette, Irene, Mona, Erica, Pastor Alvarez, Pastor Lucio, Pastor Raul Ramos, Pastor Sean, and then in our personal lives, the Alicia, Sonia, George, David. Since we've opened this church, these are all the deaths that we that my wife and I have had to deal with. And I'm just tired of it. I think I think we need to begin to go against that. And Bobby Joe. And Bobby Joe, my sister in law. Yeah. Can't forget her. These are things that, that we've dealt with a lot of it. Let's not even mention the ones that the mortuary has called me to just go do services for. And other people who who we've inadvertently met through our ministry through these past since we've opened. This is just since we've opened up. That we've met through our, our ministry that we've that we've actually done services for and, and gone to do with families so we're going to pray against this stuff we're going to do it so we're going to be coming in um, uh, on our next corporate prayer a week from friday and i'm going to fast that day every corporate prayer uh we're going to i'm going to be fasting and we're going to be praying against this stuff yes come on and we're going to be praying for life yes. because even when people go go to be with the lord i'm going to tell you sister erica went to go be with the lord but I know God has promises that's going to bring life. Yes. What does that mean? Salvation is going to reign. Right. Salvation is going to reign. Yes. Lives are going to be changed. Faith is going to be seen, and right. and and God's going to be glorified. Yes. That's right. So we want to we want to pray that those are the things that we focus on. Yes. Amen. On. And um, yes, thank you. these are tough. Yes. yes, these are tough. And as the pastor, I stay strong, but it's tough, and it's not easy to stay strong. Yeah. So we want to pray for these things. I want to ask you to continue to pray for this and yes. and you know what and i didn't even mention um we've been praying for for juan perez you guys don't know who he is i just been going up the childhood friend he also went to be with the lord last saturday and uh you know what <clears throat> i'm done with it i'm done with it we're gonna we're gonna move forward he was my age so i'm gonna say he was young yeah. <laughs> Amen. so but you know what uh, uh god is good it's like the song we just said we got to run to the father That's right. Come on. you know what when our heart need, our heart is burdened and, and our faith is weak, we kind of run to the Father. When we're in the fire and we feel alone and everything's burning and falling upon us, we're not alone. Amen. We got to take heed to these things and grab and hold on to them and understand that God is still God. Amen. Amen. So you know what? This this uh, this morning, you trust in God. You cry out to God and you ask God, Amen, to meet the needs of your house. You are, you are. 
the ambassador and representation of God in your house. Ask God to bless your house and to move in your home. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna cry to God. We're gonna worship God. Amen. We're gonna open up in prayer, amen. So let's worship God this morning as we open up in prayer. Hallelujah, my Lord Jesus. I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. my Father, we thank you, God, for this time, for your power and your presence and your anointing, God. We come before your precious throne of grace, God, with humble hearts, God, as servants, God, unto your will. We pray this morning, God, for these needs, God. God, we pray, God, for salvation, God. We pray against death, God. We pray for life and salvation, God. We pray, God, for prosperity and anointing, God. God, we pray, God, that your, thy will be done upon our lives, yes. God, that there is evidence of you, God. We pray, God, uh, that for everything that we felt was for evil, God, that we will show us it is all for your glory, God. We pray, God, you bless your word. Uh, you bring an anointing. You speak to our hearts, God. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing. We praise you. We worship and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You take time to greet someone this morning. <clears throat> Yeah. I'm not going to run right now. Yeah. <laughs> if I take off my shoes, I'll run. No, I said if I took off my shoes, I would run. It's nice in here. Yeah, I think it won't go through. Turn off one of these. <coughs> hey, man, we got some announcements. Um, just want to remind you about regular services. Uh, every Sunday morning, 10, every Wednesday at 7. And... Uh, We, uh, I ordered the flyers last night. They should be here within a week or so. And they're going to be the flyers for this. One side's going to have this on it with the, the services. And then uh, the other side will be uh, um, um, a regular flyer. So I just want to, wanna, uh, we're gonna, what we're going to do is once we get the flyers in, we're going to go out and we're just going to go just saturate the area. Hey man, ordered a thousand of them. And uh, so we're just going to, you know, go pass them out, leave them on cars, leave them on doors, leave them with people, whatever we can do. And get the word out, let people know that you know what, that Jesus Christ has risen, amen, and we're going to come and celebrate him that week. Um, don't forget next Saturday, the Women's uh, Fellowship in Riverside. Um, it's going to be good. I seen Sister Estrella yesterday uh, at the, I know, it's going to sound funny, at the men's, at the men's uh, <laughs> discipleship. But, uh, but she's a servant, amen, and she was there to help the women. Oh. Uh, the Al Central Church as they put together all the food and everything for the man of God and uh, so uh, she's excited amen she's nervous and whenever somebody was going to speak the word of God is nervous it's because there's there's reverence for God and 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 they want to they want to make sure they're in line with God amen. so you women are in for a treat 
Amen. Um, next Sunday, we will have evangelist uh, Vince Margolis here next Sunday morning Amen. at 10. Uh, I want to encourage you, invite someone. Amen. You're not going to want to miss it. You're going to want to invite someone. Amen. Um, it's going to be a good time. Uh, pa uh, evangelist, he's pastor evangelist. He's pastor before. Um, you know, in my family, I, I have family that I, I've never known. And uh, in this past this past uh, year, um, I've been blessed to know some of my family, and 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 I have a cousin. I love her to death. She's amazing. She's actually in Israel right now, and um, and it turns out Pastor Evangelist Vince Margolis was her first pastor, and we didn't even know it throughout the years. Amen. And uh, so he comes with a powerful word. Good guy, good friend, and I'm encouraged to have him. Amen. So that'll be next Sunday morning at ten. Uh, don't forget, we're going to be uh, outreaching, but we're gonna, we want to make sure we let our family and our friends know that we're going to celebrate Jesus and what, and what happened, uh, amen, uh, 2,023 years ago, amen, when, uh, when Jesus was on the cross, amen, so let's, 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 uh, let's let people know about that. Also, this, this conference, um, we're having our, our annual Bible conference, it's at April the 10th through the 14th. This is, there's two things I need from this one. One is, if you want to go, let me know. If you need a room reserved, you got to let me know. Okay. And let me know the dates. Get, get with me later for the dates or text me the dates. And what we're going to do is, is so we can, we can, we can make, you need me to make the, the hotel arrangements because there's a hotel we get discounts out or whatever. Let me know so we can get that done for you. Um, and it's going to be a good time. This is an international conference. We're bringing the pastors where we've asked for special permission from Homeland Security to bring in uh, about a dozen pastors and their wives from Mexico who don't, who currently don't have visas to come across. We're bringing in the churches from Europe, and there's going to be people from all over the place coming. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a good conference. There's a there's a, a spirit of revival in the air. Uh, they're ready for it. I was talking to uh, Pastor Tony yesterday. They're ready. They've been getting things ready. They're they're doing final touch-ups, and they're excited about it. They feel that they feel they feel honored and privileged to host. And uh, so, if you want to go, let me know. Even if you can only go a portion of the, maybe the last two days, that's fine. Um, I'll be there Monday through Friday. We're coming back Saturday, and it's gonna be we're gonna have a good time in the Lord, Amen. So yeah. I encourage you. If you've never been there, I encourage you to go. And and. God, it, it will change your life. Yeah. That, I promise, it will change your life. Amen. Uh, don't forget Lima, Peru. Amen. Uh, we'll probably be purchasing these tickets probably the first weekend of April. I was going to do it the last weekend of this month, but we're going to do it the first weekend of April. And and just trusting God. And what we're going to do is uh, we'll settle on the dates. So if, you, if you're interested, still interested in going, let me know. Amen. If you if you want to if you want to uh, join in on this, um, there's several of us going. Uh, we're going. Um, uh, Rosarito's uh, pastor is going, the San Fernando pastor is going, and some people from El Centro are going, and we're going to take a little group down there. We're going to just go and just tear it up for God, amen. And we're going to spend a couple days so we can sightsee and stuff, but we're going to we're going to go tear it up for God, amen. Uh, I'm excited for it because we're going to go down there. I'll get to preach in Lima. The, my my fellow pastors are going to preach down there, and I'm excited for it because Sister Martha is going to do a woman's class down there, amen. And that's going to be exciting, amen. amen. So so it's good good times, amen. Jesus. Amen. These are all the announcements. Amen. We're going to lift up an offering. So let's worship God. Amen. Amen. Um, so the second thing when it comes to conference is we want to make sure that we, um, we uh, when we go down there, what, what we do is we take an offering as a church because the El Central Church is our mother church. I want to give you uh, an idea of, of what this is. So El Centro is our mother church. They're the ones, they're the founding church. Um, some of you went yesterday and got to see it. And it, it's, it's a rather large church. And in that church, they have reached, they've literally reached the world. They have literally gone around the world uh, preaching the gospel, opening up new churches, and they do this conference and they put on they put on a whole there's you go out you'll see and they really they really they really they're really great hosts um and we go down there and we partake amen they don't ask for a they don't ask for a dime and you, you and and 
If you've ever been, if you ever been to a large church, a mega church, or any of those things, you can't go to a, a marriage class, you can't go to a discipleship, you can't go to a conference without paying. Mm -hmm. We we don't charge for that stuff. It's all free. Everything we do is always free. Mm -hmm. But what I like to do as a church, I like since they're our mother church and that's our conference church, I like to take an offering down there and 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 bless that church yeah. for what they're doing because on Friday nights we send out new churches. Yeah. And it's going to be a big Friday night this year, and we want to we want to we want to invest in what God's doing. When when I hear the pastor in in uh, in uh, Colombia tell me that that because of what we're, we've been doing, God is moving in a way that uh, that it has allowed him to uh, to expand on his building. It, it's it's really amazing. It's really amazing. And when I go to conference, I want to make sure that they know that we are behind them, that we are in support of what's going on, that we are a part of this international ministry. We're a part of the world vision and that there's a church here in Drupal Valley that wants to support our mother church. So what I want to do is, is, is if you can, um, give an offering for that. You don't have to do it today. You don't have to do it today. But if you give an offering, if you do it on Zelle, if you do it on Zelle, get one of the little cards and, and put a conference offering. Just put it on conference offering. Yeah. Um, so we know, if, you know, if you do it on Zelle, you don't have to do it today, but we go, sun, Easter Sunday is the last day mm -hmm. before we go. So by Easter Sunday, put a conference offering. And then uh, this way I know all that money is going to be set aside and it's all going to go to them. We, yeah. we give everything. Amen. Same thing like we had Pastor Alfonso come. Everything that came in for for the men's class, everything that came in that day, we blessed them with it. Yeah. And, and and that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna put what's there straight to it, yeah. straight to the conference, so we can we can bless our, our mother church, amen, and, and let them know that we're behind them. Yeah. And me and my pastor were talking, and I'm saying, you know what, we're gonna reach the world, but we're not gonna reach the world if only one church does it. It's a group of us doing it together. And I told him it needs to be a group of us doing it together, because if you don't allow me to be a part of it, pastor, you're robbing me of my blessing. And my church wants to be blessed. Amen. Amen. So you give with an open heart. You pay your tithes. You bring an offering. You support missions. And you allow God to, to use your life. Amen. So let's bow our hearts. Amen. As we bless both the gift and the giver. Amen. God, my Father, we thank you, God, this morning, God, for this opportunity, God. I pray, God, that you pour out your spirit upon this offering. God, that you multiply it. You bless it, God. I thank you, God, for this time. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him and then up the door. What a mighty God we serve. And what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him and then up the door. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So on Wednesdays, I'm going to go back to the discipleship. This last Wednesday, it just got doubt with me on changing the, the course of what we're doing for that day. But we're going to go back to discipleship on Wednesdays. But on Sundays, we're going to be focusing for the next few weeks on prayer. I think this is something um, that we need. It's something that, 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 that if you want to serve God, there's going to, need, there's going to need to be things in our lives that need to be changed. Things that need to become priority, and, and prayer is a big part of it. See, we have a choice when we come to church. We could be a professed Christian, okay? Where when we leave, we let everyone know that we are a Christian. And sometimes this is what happens in the church is, is, is we become professed Christians because when we leave, we tell everybody, I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. And what that means is sometimes we tell them because if we didn't, they might not ever know. Because the evidence of Christ isn't, rather, isn't evident in our lives. So we can't, we can't just be a professed Christian. Sometimes we can we can we can be a church attender also. When we come to church and we put our dollar in the basket or 
Even sometimes we'll put our, our, our tithe in the basket and we'll leave the church. And it, but, but the problem is, is with church attenders <clears throat> is the, the other word for church attender is the church pretender. And what happens is, is when we leave the church as a church attender, we leave our Christianity on our seat. And what happens is we leave it in our seat because we want to make sure we don't lose our Christianity. We won't tell nobody that we've lost we've lost our, 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 our salvation because we know where it's at. We left it in the church. You know, I don't take my Christianity outside because it's so fragile. I don't want to lose it. So I leave it in the church. And this way, this way, when I act the way I do, it doesn't affect my salvation. But that's that's that that doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. See, 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 to be a Christian. A follower of Jesus Christ, born again. Remember, we've got to be born again. You know, the Bible says that unless a man is born again, and to make it to make it politically correct, unless a woman is born again, okay? Unless a, unless a man or a woman is born again, you cannot, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. You cannot. You cannot. It's what the Bible says. It's your choice whether you believe it. But to be a follower of Jesus Christ, a born-again Christian, life changed, sanctified, set free, delivered man or woman of God, there's going to need to be evidence that God is alive and lives inside of you. Yesterday on the way to the men's class, I went, I began to go on one of my, my, my Jesus talks. And, and, and I say it that way because I, you get me started. I, I go, I can go all day. I'll go all day going story after story, and I'll be quoting scripture. We'll just go day. We'll just go in and go out, and and people will try to 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 divert me and, and and come up with their thoughts and their ideas and their belief systems, and I'll just bring it back to the Word of God. And one of the things I talked about is when 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 Paul writes to the church in Corinth, and he says in First Corinthians eleven one. I love this scripture. It's one of the hardest scriptures you could ever read. Simple scripture. You see it on our slides. It says, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. This is the type of Christian we need to be. We need to be an imitate me as I imitate Christ kind of Christian. As you live your life, can people imitate you? Can they take the soul purpose of who you are from the core remove it from your body implant it in someone else and know that heaven will become their home who you are because when 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 we eliminate prayer from our life and we eliminate the relationship of Jesus Christ in our life what happens is is we become a church attender where we leave our, our Christianity here because we, we justify sin because I don't bring it to church. We justify thought systems and, and belief systems because, because it, it doesn't affect my Christianity because I didn't bring it with me. I left it at home. I left it at the church. It's safe over there. It's fragile. When I get there, I'll be the Christian. I'll, live, I'll, I'll lift up holy hands and, and I'll sing praises unto God. You know why you sing, you sing when you come to church? You ever wondered why you sing when you come to church but you won't sing other places? It's because when you come to church, everyone else is singing, so it's easy to sing. You ever wonder why if, if you show up to prayer meeting and we pray for an hour, do you ever wonder why you can pray for an hour when you show up to prayer meeting? It's simple. Because when you're at home, five minutes, I got everything out in the open. I pray for mom, dad, uncle, Theo. I pray for everybody. Five minutes, take up all it took. But when I come to church and pray with everybody, I can pray for an hour. Why? Why is that? You ever wonder that? It's simple. It's because everyone else in church is doing it. We're all here for the same purpose. We know that when we come, it's a time to sing songs and, and praises unto God. It's a time to come and pray and lay a hold of God. You know that when we pray at home, we'll, we'll, we'll pray on the toilet. You'll pray while you're cooking. You'll pray while you're mowing the lawn. But when we come to church, we pray at the altar. And we don't make an altar at home. Do you know why? Because when you come to church, you know that this is the altar. You know that this is what other people are doing. And it's easy for you to come and kneel and, and put your head down before Christ because it's what everyone else is doing. But when we leave and we leave our Christianity at, at, at church and we become that church attender, the whole Paul 
when, when the whole story of Paul when he says to the the church in Corinth, imitate me just as I almost imitate as I also imitate Christ, it no longer exists in our Christianity. See, Paul's not speaking from a place of righteousness or from a heart full of pride. You know, when, when Paul said this, he's saying, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. I want you to think about this. People, he's writing to the church in Corinth who are falling into temptation. Remember, in Corinthians, it talks about, for the kingdom of heaven is without, without fornicators and adulterers and idolaters. And, and he goes on, and homosexuals, and he says all these things, right? And he's telling the free church, don't do these things. And he says, well, if you don't know what to do, then just imitate me as I imitate Christ, because I love my Lord. But he's writing from a place of humility, because as he's writing this letter, he's in jail being persecuted for the very thing that, 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 that he used to persecute people for, for preaching the gospel. So when Paul says, imitate me, just as I also imitate Christ, he was speaking from a place of humility. See, it is in the time of persecution and conflict, and especially in the time of, of family and friend gatherings, that the evidence of the life of Jesus will either be seen or invisible. I want you to think about that. It's going to be in the time of persecution. You know it's not in the time of blessing that the, that, that the evidence of Christ is seen in your life? Because in the time of blessing, you're going to rejoice and love God. Why? Because you're in a blessing. Why wouldn't you? I, I, my needs are being met. I'm living an abundant life. Yeah, I'm blessed. People don't see that. You know when people see your faith? They see it in a time of tribulation, a time of persecution, a time of pain, a time when everyone else in the room is crying, but you're standing strong. That's when Christ is evident. Not because you got a raise. Not because you got a nice house or a nice car. That's not when Christ is evident. Because, you know, those things are things that you can accomplish for yourself. You can accomplish a raise at work if you just go to work and, and do your job. You can accomplish a nice house if you do the first. Go to work and do your job. You can purchase your own car. I'm not saying that they're not blessings from God because God is the one that's given all things, right? Gives us all things. But what I'm saying is it's in the time where everyone else is crumbling and God is lifting you up, that people say, man, that, 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 there's God there. This is something I've seen this past week, where you can, you can go into a room and you can see chaos, but yet you still see the power of God. See, it's in the time of persecution and conflict. And in the time when with our family is when it needs to be visible and seen. See, I constantly quote Paul uh, when he speaks to the jailer. Remember the jailer? Let's put this into context. <clears throat> the jailer, he is a Roman guard. Rome at this time was more powerful than the United States is today. It was the most powerful nation on planet Earth. Why are they more powerful than we are today? Because they didn't have the technology we have today. They had solid men who would fight for, for their belief. So you had a Roman soldier who's in charge of, of maintaining the prison. Think about this. You've got cells there and you've got one guard. You go to any of our prisons, there's over 100, or there's 100 people on staff. Where you got one guard, standing guard for all these prisoners. Because if anyone escapes, he will kill them. Earthquake hits, the jail doors will open up. <clears throat> and the jailer runs in and he sees all the doors open up and, and, and he begins to understand the doors are open, they must have ran away. My Lord. So this jailer, what he does is he grabs his sword and he goes to fall on his sword to kill himself. 
because the punishment of an escaped convict was death to the guard. The guard's life was on the line if one of those escaped. They would die. Okay? So this is transpiring. This is taking place. And during all this, Paul begins to shout out. Him and Silas are in jail. They begin to shout out. Don't do it. Don't kill yourself. Because they knew Paul, Paul was a Pharisee. He was highly ranked in Rome. He understood, the, he understood the law and what was going to happen to the jailer. He didn't need to see the jailers pull out his sword. He knew it was going to happen. He begins to shout out to the jailer. He says, hey, don't do that. Stop. No, we're all here. We're all here. Don't kill yourself. Okay? This is the context of what's going on. The jailer who is holding Paul prisoner, Paul is now trying to get him to trying to save his life so he don't die. When the jailer sees that everyone's still there, the jailer, he wants to know. Because God was evident in the life of Paul and Silas at this time. He said, I want that prisoner. That who I keep in a cage, the one I treat like an animal, I want what you have. Because right now in this time of persecution in your life, I see God in you. I want that, prisoner. And he tells, he tells Paul, what must I do to be saved? What shall I do? And this is what Paul says to the jailer in Acts 16.31. He says, he says, so they said, this is Paul inside as he's speaking, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. I quote this scripture all the time. I live on this scripture. I have seen this scripture come to pass, live. I have seen it in my own life, in my own family. I serve God. My dad never served God. Never stepped foot in church with me, but gave his life to God and asked me about the Jesus I've been talking about my whole life before he died. My mother on her deathbed asked me about Jesus and I, and I was able to pray with her. I seen this evident in reality, in life. Now, put this back into context with Paul. Paul begins to shout out to the jailer. He says, except the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your whole household shall be saved. Man. But what was Paul when he was believing this? He's saying with confidence, no, 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 imitate me, church in Corinth, as I imitate Christ. Although I am persecuted, although I'm in jail, all they are treating me like an animal and I cannot move and my freedoms and liberties have been removed from me. Although I cannot eat the food that I like and I can't see the people I love. Although that my life feels like it's at an end and they may kill me. If you imitate me, you'll make it to heaven. Jailer, accept Jesus Christ and even you can make it to heaven. In the time of persecution, in the time where everything's falling apart in his life, in the time where, where everyone else would have given up. Prisoners were, were known, amen, to commit suicide in the jail because they knew there was no hope. In order for Paul to tell the jailer to not kill himself, and that he can have salvation, and let him know that if he gave his life to God, that his whole house would be saved. Yeah. Paul was going to need to believe it himself. Paul was going to need to understand that this is true. The words that he spoke, he had to tell himself and convince himself first. He could not have spoke those words if he didn't believe them. He could not have shown himself to, to, to the church in Corinth or to the, to, to the jailer if he didn't believe the words that he was speaking. He had to first believe them. Many times, amen, we, we, we stumble, we fall, we feel alone when times of persecution hits us because, because we're struggling with believing that this scripture is real for me. 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I believe that for him because I don't feel it right now. I am being persecuted. I am caged like an animal and I feel like I have no freedom. Have you felt that way? Remember, Paul was in jail being punished. See, we all have family and friends that we love. Yes. But we don't always trust them. Amen? We don't always trust our family and friends. But the family and friends that are closest to us, we do trust. But that trust didn't come overnight. You ever notice that most adults have a very limited amount of friends? Yes. Most adults only hang out with only a certain amount of their family. That's not, that's not by accident. There's history that brought them to that point in life. It doesn't matter if you're related to somebody. It doesn't mean you have to trust them. Because most people, believe me, I'm related to a lot of people you do not want to trust. Right? I, we all come from families like that. But we also all have people in our family, in our life, that we trust. I have a cousin that I just met. We'll figure. I, I just met a cousin I didn't even know existed. Right? I love her to death. I do. I trust her. I absolutely trust her. Because God is evident in her life. If God wasn't evident in her life, I could I I don't know if I can have that. I don't I don't I don't know. I need I need God. I don't need family and friends without God. I need God. Amen. He'll bring my family and friends. But I need God first. That's right. It didn't take it didn't take years for me to develop that I knew I could trust her. It took it took God living in her to know that I can trust her. That's right. Come on. You see, we have family and friends that are around us that are waiting to see if they can trust you. See, in order for your family and friends to believe, to believe you that God can save them, you're, you're, you will need to believe it first. You need to believe it first. Yesterday, Brother Juan said something. He said, man, I wish the rapture would just hit now, man. I'm ready. I, I, we, I just got to do this, right? You know how scary of a thought that is? And how pure your heart needs to be in order to even say those words? How much you must be seeking God in order to even let those words come out of your mouth? Because to, in order to say those words, you got to be seeking God. So when I hear him say it, I'm like, thank you, Lord. That people are crying out to you. That, they, that, 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 that there's enough evidence of you in their life that they're trusting you. It doesn't matter how long we have been going to church. Or our own idea of how our life has changed. Those around us are waiting to see evidence that God is real in your life before they choose your God. Okay? Your God. What makes your God different? What are you saying, Pastor? There's many gods? No. I'm talking about your God. What makes, I'm not talking about Buddhas and all that other stuff. I'm talking about your God, your Jesus. There's a song, you know, somebody was saying during all this stuff at the hospital, was saying, man, I can't believe, you know, this and that. I said, well, I go, you know, you know what my guys, you know, you know what, you know what, what's going on right here? Because the sister was a fighter, man. She's stinking fought. You know, everybody knows that she's a fighter. And then the nurses and doctors are dumbfounded. I go, you know what happened? My sister said, let me tell you about my Jesus. Yes. He ain't going what you say. I'm going what he says. That's let me right. tell you about my Jesus. So what makes your God different? What's so different about your God? Why do people want to serve your God? Why would somebody ever want to go to your church? Do you even have a church? Do you own your church? Well, no, 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 I don't sign the lease. No, that's, that has nothing to do with it. Is it your church? Do you take responsibility for the souls that enter into the door? 
Why would somebody want to serve your God? Paul's being persecuted, jailed, treated like an animal, ready for trial. Possibility of the sentence is death. And he's telling the jailer, let me tell you about my Jesus. Not only is he going to save you, but he's going to save your whole family. And if you just do what I'm doing, you'll know that God is real. You imagine, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Um, but, but you're in jail. You want me to go to jail? Just do what I'm doing because God is real in my life. But what makes your God different? Remember, what did Jesus say? Matthew 22, 32, he says, he says, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not dead, but he's a living God, he says. Amen. Why do you think he says, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Because God was evident in their lives. Amen. When you look at the life of Jacob, the life of Abraham, Abraham's called the father of faith. And Jesus says, I was his God. I am the father, I am the God of Abraham. Amen. When you look at Abraham for faith, you're looking at me, God says. When you're looking for strength, amen, and courage in the Bible, and you see these men of God, you're looking at me, not them. Hallelujah. Why do people want to serve your God? What makes your God different? Do they see the faith of God in you? When they look at your face and say, you know what, that's a man of God, that's a woman of God, I, got, I, I need faith like that. How can they stand that strong? In the time of persecution where everyone everyone would have fell apart. Man, they're standing strong in God. Yeah. That's the God I want. Amen. I don't need the God of their car. I don't need the God of their house. I don't need the God of their job. Mm -hmm. That's going to go away. They can lose it all one day when they make their boss mad. And it's all gone. Uh-uh. I want the God that gave them that faith. Mm -hmm. What makes your God different? We know that, that the God of Abraham brought him faith. We understand these things. We understand the strength of Jacob and Isaac. We understand these things, but we know what Jesus is saying is, is it comes from him. See, God is not different. There's not multiple gods out there. But the way we present our God will get the unbeliever to think that God is different everywhere. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. The same God that brought Abraham to be the man of faith that he is is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. The same God that got Elijah to put down the mantle and watch the, the water to, uh, uh, separate is, is, is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. The same God that cried out to Lazarus, come forth, Lazarus, out of that tomb. Is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. But in the time of persecution, Paul says, imitate me. Because no matter what I go through, no matter where I am, no matter what my surroundings may appear to be, no matter what the guy next to me is doing, no matter what I look like, no matter where you think you have to come see me, my God is powerful. And I will not waver. So we have a choice. We can attend. We can take our fragile salvation and leave it in our chair right next to our Bible. And walk right out. And we'll just walk right out. No, I'm saved. How, how do you know you're saved? And somebody tells you, how do you know you're saved? What are you going to tell them? Let me tell you about my Jesus. My Jesus saved me. He has sanctified me. He has changed me. He has set me free. Amen. But the problem isn't that whether or not you can answer. The problem is that they even had to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Are you saved? Oh, I'm, my bad. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't see. I didn't see the sign that you were saved. I. I didn't, I didn't know. I, I didn't see the evidence that you were saved. That, I'm sorry, that's why I'm asking. Are you saved? Is there evidence that God is alive in our lives today? See, however you are representing him, God, will determine if others will want 
your God as you present him. Or if they're going to want the God of someone or something else. Or they're going to want the God of the NFL, the God of Major League Baseball. They're going to want the God of the NBA. They're going to want the God of the church down the street. They're going to want the God of the organization that they go to. They're going to want the God of Disneyland, the God of Knott's Berry Farm. What God are they going to want? They want the God of Hollywood because all these are things that distract people and draw them towards it because it brings an interest that they believe can help them in their life. People get so caught up in different things because it fulfills their life. Why do you think people are so excited about sports? Because it fulfills a void in their life. Something that needs to be fixed, something that needs to be, to, that, that they need to engulf themselves in. Because there's always going to be an emptiness. So we fill it with things that, that are out there, with movies and, and, and all these other things that are going on, and entertainment and travel and, 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 and drugs and alcohol, fornication, all these things. We, we, we fill the, that void with whatever it is. But why are we not filling that same thing with God? Why are we not overflowing in abundance? Remember, remember, he said, "Press down, shaking together, running over." He says that 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 he that he wants to, he wants to give you a life. What kind of life does the Bible say that God wants to give you? A life more abundant, a life that you can't contain for yourself. You know why? You know why he's not the God of your car, not the God of your house, because that's something you can, can you can get for yourself. You know how many people out their own houses and nice cars, nicer than ours, that are not Christians are going to church. He's not the God of your things. Because the Bible says when we die, we're going to stand before him butt naked, completely, not hidden behind nothing. Nothing. Can, we're going to stand behind nothing and behind no one. But Lord, um, you, you, you know my sister, right? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, my sister, you knew her, right? Well, yeah, but um, I do not know you. I don't see your name. Depart from me. This is what the Bible says. But we leave our Christianity at church. Help us, Lord. There are many church organizations, there's a lot of them, that proclaim and speak of a God. But do not have the blood of Christ. They present a God that people draw to. I got instruments with no musician. But people will draw to the church with the band and the light show. I have a church with instruments and no musicians, but we just experience the song service with you. There's no denying that the presence of God fell. Yeah, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. See, there's organizations yeah. out there that will present a show to give you their feeling of what they believe God is. Yeah, when people see you, do they see your God? Is the God you're serving the God that they're going to want to serve? See, when relationships are built, trust becomes evident. Amen. You know, my wife trusts me. I've given her plenty of reason not to. But she still loves me and trusts me because we have built a relationship over the years. See, in order for there to be a change in your life, in order for Acts 16.31 to become evident that the, your household shall be saved in your life, in order for that to come to pass in your life and in your household, to get saved, the relationships between us and Jesus will need to be felt and seen by those around us. In order for, we, we, we think, we think we can stand on the word of God and do nothing. Lord, you said, except the Lord Jesus Christ, and my whole household shall be saved. I stand upon that. You do nothing to show that God is real. Why would they pray? My dad, in 2003, was dying of cancer. He lived in Pennsylvania. I lived here in California. I was up in Madera. No, I think I was in, I was in Rialto. And, and he's dying of cancer. They moved out there in 96. I had only seen him maybe five times since 96. And when I went to go visit him, the first words out of his mouth was, Mijo, what's this Jesus stuff you've been talking about all these years? 
Is there evidence yeah. in your life that on somebody's deathbed they're going to cry out to God? Yeah. I'm going to read you something. I got a text yesterday. I won't say who it is, but I'll read, I'll read what it says. It says, don't need the weekend. It's a text message. Challenge accepted. I will work for solutions. I will look for solutions and not the exit door. I have yet to fail at anything that's been thrown my way. I won't start now. I'm all in. Thanks, Ben. Needless to say, I look up to you for your wisdom, sound advice, and leadership. Because I won't throw away the last eight years for some ad ad adversity. It's my responsibility to lead by example. I will become the standard. And then my response was, I am so glad to hear, hear you say this. I know. He said, I said, I know. And uh, as I said, I can, I go, I know this. I'm telling him, I know who you are. I, I know this person I can stand behind. And I said, let's do this. I'm with you. And his response to that was, thank you. Honestly, I appreciate you. I think you're the only one that knows how to get me fired up. Telling me to quit that I'm going to ruin your, your numbers and got me fired up. I will continue to reach out for your mentorship. You see how that sounded? He's not a Christian. It's a coworker. He's just somebody I work with. He was going through some things on Friday. He began to talk to me. He called out. He called me. This guy worked for me about seven years ago. I talked to him maybe maybe once a year at work. He was going through something really bad at work where he was he was considering that he, to even leave the company, and he worked his tail off to get where he's at. And he called me up looking for some advice. So I talked to him. And this is the result. He sounded like a Christian. Somebody, a disciple, is what he sounded like. Right? The point I'm making is simple. Is God evident in your life? That no matter where you're at, you're going to see the glory of God moving other people. He doesn't know it, but he was being discipled. People want to get saved, and the only reason they don't is because we don't ask them. Churches are not full because we're not bringing them. The sign of a healthy church isn't that we go pass off flyers and people come. The sign of a healthy church is that the people in the church bring people. When I gave my life to God in Ontario, we filled that church. We did. We flooded the church with family. Because the family knew it was evident God had to have been real in our lives. In the book of Psalms 127 verse 1, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the, the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Unless we lay a hold of God, we're never going to accomplish what God has for our lives. Unless God goes before us, unless God builds the house, unless God becomes visible and evident in our lives, the work that we are saying, the, the, the work that we're saying in the name of Jesus become nothing other than empty words. If we're not seeking God, but we're saying we're doing something for God, all we're doing is saying a bunch of empty words. When are we going to seek God? When are we going to say, God, I, 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 I can't do nothing without you. Amen. It is not me. It is he. Right. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yes, How can we accomplish anything unless we seek God first? You can see it evident when you go to places and you see whether or not God is evident in people's life. You can see how they come to church. You can see how they walk out of church. You can see how they respond. You can see how they talk to the pastor. You can see kind of the respect they have for the man of God or the lack of respect they have for the man of God. It's evident. And the reason for it is because unless the Lord goes before us, all this is for nothing. The psalmist clearly says, unless God goes before us, we are doing this in vain. No purpose, no reward, no promise. 
in order for there to be a real change, a real conversion, two, two very important things are gonna to need to happen. First, you wanna see change in your life. You wanna see your kids get saved. You wanna see those around you's lives change. You wanna experience true blessing. First thing is, you're gonna to have to establish some faithfulness in your life. How will you ever make it, how will you ever make it as a Christian if church is not a priority? How? That, how does that make sense? I'm gonna make it in my job. I'm just not gonna show up to it. How does that make sense? Good. How will God speak to your heart and confirm that something needs to change if you don't come to church to receive from God? Yeah, yeah. How? We're the, church. We're the church, not the building. Well, then start acting like it. That's right. The second thing is prayer. Come on. How can a relationship between you and God be established if there's no communication? No linking of hearts. When we come for corporate prayer, you know how we do that? It's for those who come can link hearts yes, amen. to strengthen the church. Yes. Yeah, but it's, I don't know. No, 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 no. To strengthen the church. Why? Because we are the body of what? Christ. Amen. When we come together and link hearts in prayer, you know that we're strengthening the body of Christ? Yeah. We just took Christ to the gym. We got him built up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And when we don't come, you know that if you go to a gym and work out, but you don't stretch first, you're going to come out with some problems? Amen. And that's what we do in church. Oh, but I, I'll go the way I want, look the way I want, do what I want. Showing no reference. I was saying this, and I was saying this. When when we when we deal with men, I don't treat men like boys. I treat them like men. Boys, I don't treat boys like boys. I treat them like men because they're what's what's a youth? They are a young individual that is developing the characteristics of a man and a woman. So why would I treat them like a kid? No, I treat, them, I treat them like who they are, who they believe to be. Young man, young woman. So yesterday in the van, when we're going down there, I said it real simple. You know, people, people don't come to church wearing their best anymore. They wear chanclas and show their infected toes. Yeah. It's true. I'm not talking about women, about oh, men. People won't get dressed up. Why do I have to wear a shirt and tie? God accepts us as we are. Okay, I, yeah, I agree with that. That's why you died on the cross. That's why you took me out of sin. But there's still got to be some kind of change in your life. Yes, come on. And one thing I said yesterday, I think it was very powerful, was you go to court, you get dressed up. Mm -hmm. You don't wear a hat at court. Matter of fact, you address the man wearing the dress behind the behind the desk as your honor. And yes, sir. No, sir. Right away, sir. And his sole purpose is to punish you. But you put on your best clothes. Some were shirt and ties to to, to court to prove that I'm a I'm, I am valuable to society. But don't come to church showing that you're valuable to God. I'm not saying you got to have a dress code. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is the value and reverence for God has to be evident. Why, why, why I, I ask this, what makes your God different? What? What makes him different? What makes him different? When you would dress up for a sinner wearing a dress behind a desk, give them respect and honor of a title, but don't do the same thing in the house of God. And that's the church today. Jesus understood the importance of prayer when he went to Gethsemane and asked the, asked the, 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 the disciples to stand watch. 
Think about this. Jesus tells the disciples in the in in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says, Peter, you get all your homies. I need you guys to stand watch right now. Because I'm about to go and pray. I need you guys to stand watch. This was when, when the, the Roman soldiers were coming with Judas to come and, 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 and arrest Jesus. And we look at that story and we think about it as, well, Jesus is time to stand and watch because he wants to protect, he wants to be protected from the Roman soldiers that are going to come. No, he doesn't. He knew his purpose in life. He knew he was going to be jailed. He knew he was going to be put on trial. He knew he was going to die on the cross. He knew this was, this was going to happen. This is why he says, Father, if this cup can pass before me, please. But if not, Lord, I will be done. He understood that death was coming. He understood that he was going to have to, he was going to, have to suffer some persecution for, this, for the salvation of humanity. He understood this. So when he told the disciples, hey, stand watch for me while I go and pray, it wasn't because he was afraid of the Roman soldiers. He knew. When the soldiers came, what did Peter do? Grab the sword, cuts off the ear. What did Jesus do? Dude, keep back. Put the sword away, man. Put this man's ear back on. And heal him. Awesome. Right? But why did he do that? Why did he say, stand watch? It's because Jesus knew he was about to go and pray. And he knew that that was where the battle was at. He knew that that was where the war was going to be at. He needed no distractions from the enemies. He needed no distractions from anyone outside. He needed to lay a hold of the Father, and he needed to go to war with the devil. He needed to cry out for humanity because he was going to bring salvation to the earth. This is why he needed people to stand guard for him. It wasn't because he was afraid of the Roman soldiers. He knew. He knew his destiny. He knew the plan of God for his life. Stand watch while I go to battle for all those who need me in their life. Good question. Stand watch while I cry out for those who are dying in their sin. Stand watch for me. Because when I get on my knees right now, this is when heaven's going to open up and the glory of God's going to fall on people. Amen. Stand watch for me. Thank you, Jesus. And this is why he had them stand there. But we look at we look at this as something that we don't need. Well, I do it while I'm on the toilet. I do it while I, I, I say a quick prayer when I eat. I hear so many people who brag about they bless their food. Are you stinking kidding me? That's the least of my prayers. That's actually my shortest prayer. Got to pray God bless me in Jesus' name. That's my fastest thing. I, matter of fact, when I go out to fellowship with my pastor, he tells me to bless it every time because he knows what I'm going to say. Got to pray God bless me in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's eat. Rub it up, up. Thanks for the grub. Let's go. That's the reason my prayers. But there's times where I come into the building when nobody's here. I lock the door behind me because I needed to stand watch while I get on my knees and begin to cry out to God for all those who enter into that door. Because this is where the battle begins. And yet, we leave our salvation and our Bibles in our chairs. I've never had multiple Bibles in my life. And some people do, and praise God for that. I thank God for the app, actually, because every note, everything that I put in mind, it goes with me everywhere. But I've never understood having multiple Bibles. It, it just never understood. It never made sense to me. Because when I read the Bible, I have no choice but to highlight, underline, write notes, and everything else. That's just what I do. So if I'm reading the Bible at home, well, I got a Bible at home. Okay, yeah, but where's your notes? Where's your highlights? Well, that Bible don't need it. Because that Bible, I don't need God in my life in that Bible. I just need God in my life in this Bible. Uh, my sword goes with me everywhere because I'm never, I'm never not ready for battle. I'm never, never not ready for battle. Matter of fact, the app that I use is actually on my phone also, and everything that I highlight in my iPad gets highlighted in my phone, and it's vice versa, because I'm never going to be without God. In order for us to move forward, people are going to need to know that your God is the true living God. I like every bow, every eye closed in respect to Jesus. Hallelujah. I praise you, God. I worship you, Lord. I give you glory. I give you honor, God. I thank you, God. I want to thank you and love you, Lord, for your power, for your presence, for all that you're doing. 
you know, today you're here and, and you didn't expect today's service, but right now you're finding your hearts far away from God. You're finding something, something's shaking up inside you. Something's different. And, and we, 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 we get so caught up on, on what I've been serving God this amount of years. I've been coming that long. And you know what? Who cares, man? One of the things I said, it, 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 I was talking about yesterday with Pastor Rudy, is, is you know, so many people, man, you, go, you, you hear a word, you hear a sermon, you hear a message, and, and God's dealing with something else, not even had to do with the, with, the, with the service. But we don't come to the altar because we don't want the other people to think that, that, that you're dealing with what the pastor preached about. Forget that, man. The altar is where you get healed. It's where you get sanctified. It's where God meets with you. It's where he changes your life. It's where he pats you on the back and tells you, you know what, me home, you know me home. You're going to be okay. I love you still. It's never too late to change. It's never too late to turn around. It's never late. You know that God we serve allows U-turns? So I don't care how long you've been coming. I don't care how long you've been a part of this church or ministry. I don't care. None of that matters, man. What matters is your salvation, where you're at today. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. You know what that means? That means today's that day. Tomorrow's going to be today. Today. Every day we got to fight for our salvation. So if you're here and you'd like to accept Jesus Christ, I don't care if you've done it before a hundred times. Why well, your first time? You'd like to accept Jesus Christ. You're here. You'd like to accept Jesus Christ. You raise your hand. God see this on his hearts. Will it be anyone else? You're here. You'd like to accept Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what the past was, man. Let's get it right today. Today's the day, man. What makes your God different? You know what makes your God different? Is that he touches you in a way that gets you to respond. So today, respond. And you'd like to accept Jesus Christ, you just raise your hand. And then those in the back who raise your hand, I'd like to ask you guys to come forward to pray. I'm gonna pray with you, but I'm gonna put on, a, I'm gonna do something else while you guys come. I'm gonna put on some, I'm gonna put on some music. And I'm going to challenge you, church, to come. I'm going to challenge you to, to, to come and pray at the altar. If we are honest with ourselves. If we are honest with ourselves, we know.